to sew into bourbon. Uh, what episode is this? Doesn't matter. We don't. It doesn't matter. I don't know. Whatever we, you edited it into and yeah. name it. Uh, 27. 27. Episode, episode 27. 27. What are we doing tonight, Charlie? What do we have here in front of us? What we have here in front of us is the 2022 Angel's Envy Cask Strength. That's a beautiful, uh, beautiful box you got there. Yeah, it's like a little casket yeah. for some wonderful bourbons. <laughs> casket. So, we'll turn around. Got some beautiful wings on the back. There you go. Yeah, it's very cool. So this is a um, 50 state release. The paper fell out. Uh, I'll try to do this without. It's fine. You got that? Yeah. Comes with this little card. It tells you all the tasting notes. Don't read those. Dad. Don't read those. I'm Don't not, read those. Okay. Don't okay. read those. We're gonna Let's look at those right after. So, um, presentation, if, if you've been into bourbon for a while, you've probably seen this. In all likelihood, you've probably had this, or at least one of the years. Uh, they've been doing it since 2012, was the first year. Um, very limited release, that one. I don't have that one, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, but this is a 50 state release, so you can probably track a bottle of this down. Um, again, beautiful bottle. Hence the box, it looks just like any other Angel's Envy um, bottle, except for the cool little icon at the bottom there. Cast strength, 119.8 uh, proof. Nice. And Angel's Envy, I mean, it's just such a beautiful bottle. Uh, always such great presentation. Um, I have a little story about Angel's Envy. I'm excited to hear So it. in my previous life, I was a contractor for FedEx oh. and one of my areas that I delivered to was Crestwood, Kentucky. Just so happens that is where Angel's Envy started. So when they first started, they just had a little little office in this little tiny office building in Crestwood, Kentucky. I used to deliver to them. So I actually was able to get a, a pre-release before any, any of their bourbon was ever released. I got a few little sample bottles awesome. to try. Uh, I still have the little bottle. I don't have the bourbon the, anymore. I where, wish I did. Where did the bourbon go? It went in my belly. Uh, and uh, anyway, so that's my that's my Angel's Envy story. That's I great. didn't know it was very exciting. That's a great story. I the the thing that I love about Angel's Envy is when Angel's Envy started, um, and people look at Angel's Envy even if you're not a bourbon person. Angel's Envy and Woodford Reserve are like the crowned, at least to me, and, and in my kind of understanding of people that don't drink, uh, which is strange, right? But <laughs> when they say, oh, what's a good bourbon? They always go to Woodford Reserve and Angel's Envy. And the reason for that is the beauty of the bottles and how it's marketed. Mm -hmm. And what I find interesting is how much, and to me, so much of it is undeserved disdain that the bourbon community has for Angel's Envy. And I think it stems from Angel's Envy was one of the first major bourbon makers to finish yeah. bourbon. It was a, that was a taboo thing going back to 2010. Um, now, who doesn't have a finished bourbon? And if they don't, they should. Oh, because 100%. it's good. It is it's good. Cool. And, and and so to me, I think that that innovative spirit that they had then. You know, it's kind of that thing, the first guy through the door always gets bloodied. Mm -hmm. And they got bloodied, and they took it on the chin for a long time. But Angel's Envy is, is, is a solid pour. Their special releases that they've done over the, the past couple of years, some of them have been amazing. And I look forward to the cask release every year. I have one of every year, unopened, except for 2012, because there <laughs> were like literally 500 bottles. Mm -hmm. So, And I've drank most of them, and they are all very unique and very good. So... So if anyone has a 2012 bottle unopened that you would like to donate to Hair Charlie. We'll drink it. Yeah. I drank a 20, my story time, I drank a 2013, one of the best bottles of bourbon I've ever had. Really? Uh, oh man. Okay. Unbelievable. Well now you got my, uh, you got, you have my hopes up. I have not had this particular expression. You've that's, not had That's a, what we call them You've now, not had a cast right? You've never had a cast strength? I don't think I have. I don't believe wow. I have. I, and we just, did not, we did not, uh, so full disclosure for, mm -hmm. for, to let you see behind the camera, we didn't tell each other what we were filming tonight. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I'll bring a bottle, you bring a bottle. This is my bottle. So this is, this will be very good. 
first thing you notice is the color. I mean, it is. It's dark. It's dark. Yeah. It's awesome. dark like my soul. And these are, if you don't. Yeah, I heard it too, guys. Um, if you don't know about Angel's Envy, their bourbon is finished in port wine barrels. So that's what we're drinking. Charlie, what is a port wine barrel? Uh, port wine is a dessert wine. Um, and that's about the extent of my knowledge on port <laughs> wine. So look, we've made it very clear. This is not an educational podcast. Uh, so including the hosts, uh, you know, maybe throw up a softball like, where's Angel's Envy located? Or do you like Angel's Envy? Not, where, where do you get, anyways, let's try. I'm not trying to throw you off. You are so knowledgeable about all things, really. I am shocked that you did not have more information on this, but we shall drink. No, I'm disappointed. And it, that, let me, another caveat here. I'm not, I haven't been the hugest fan of Angel's Emmy in the past. Not that I think it's not a good bourbon. Um, it's a fine bourbon, I'm sure. It's just not, hasn't been my particular taste. Now, over the years, I've, I've had a few um, that I've, I've liked a little better than, than what I initially had, had tried. So I'm kind of looking forward to see. We're going to drink seeing, this and we're going to come yeah. back to that comment. Oh, just so. tell me to shut up. No, 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 no. I want, because I do Jeez. want to talk. So we're going to nose this first. Hmm. That, okay. So my first, the first thing I pick up is musty grapes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, I oh, I was gonna say it. it smells like it smells like old wine. It smells like you spilled some wine on something. Which is like. shocking that I would actually pick something yeah, like that, that up. And I promise that is yeah. what. And that immediately came to also, me. Also, for almost 120 proof, I'm not getting any ethanol. No, no like, ethanol no, at all. No, no alcohol. Like, not that I'm gonna nose this until <laughs> I go nose death. But uh, uh, cheers, drinking cheers. Time. And it definitely has legs. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's really good. Man. And it it does not No. It it, it doesn't drink like a what is it? 120 proof? Almost 120 proof. Yeah, it's that's... a hundred and nineteen point eight proof. Wow. So you start and, and I'll finish this and, and uh, uh, well, then I'll talk. I'm gonna have to have another taste. Mm. Man, it's it's very smooth. Um, it's got a, a, a sweetness to it, but it's not. I don't. I don't. I'm not even sure how to describe yeah. it. Maybe it's it complex. May, yeah, it's it's super. It's what you expect from a good finished bourbon. And if you've drank a lot of finished bourbons, you like finished bourbons because they are complex. Mm -hmm. And you get weird flavors and kooky things with them that you don't normally get from just a regular old, you know, corn mash bill. And the sweetness isn't, it's not overpowering. That's no. not, it, I get it on the tongue initially. Yep. And then as it kind of goes into the back of the mouth, the sweetness kind of fades away yep. and it just becomes a full, just a fuller, smooth bourbon. The wine really shines. It's very wine forward, mm -hmm. very finish forward in all of the best ways. Because again, if you've drank a lot of finished products, you've had products that you're like, oh, that was finished too long or too much, mm -hmm. or it loses any endearing qualities. This is still very much a bourbon, but it has some really complex wine kind of profile to it as well. Um, and it is a dangerous bottle <laughs> because... <laughs> In terms of a sipper, mm -hmm. like I've been trying, like don't chug it, don't chug it, but I'm gonna chug it now while going. Yeah, I keep wanting to reach, I keep wanting to reach for it and have another um, sip. But I do think, I mean, the nose isn't something that's, when I smell it, it, it doesn't yeah. attract me. It's not like, oh man, that smells great. It's a must, like I said, yeah. it's a musty smell, like musty grapes. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not offensive, it, it doesn't, you know, it's, it doesn't deter you from drinking it. Right. I like, um, 
I think why I like this particular bottle so much is it's not a cheap bottle. Uh, retail on this is 219, 220, somewhere around there. Um, I, bought, I got mine at the distillery out the door, I think it was 255. So that's not a cheap bottle. The other thing on your special releases, <coughs> excuse me, special releases for, for anything that you're buying, you want it to live up to the hype. To me, this drinks like a $255 bottle of bourbon. I've spent more for much worse. For sure, for sure. Um, it definitely, <clears throat> I, I've had worse <laughs> for, for n not that I've paid that much for some of the, the bottles that are out there that I would consider very much inferior to this, but I have tried bourbons that are uh, much more highly regarded, I guess. Yeah. Um, and they don't, they don't stand up to this. So things I love about this is it's a limited release. The packaging is exquisite. I mean the, the lid, so it's a magnetic lid and it has a little hook on the back of it and you can hang mm. that. And this is not printed that is engraved into the wood. Um, and that's awesome. And the box is designed for display as well. So, I mean, you just, it spares no expense. And I know a lot of people, as a general rule, the fancier the bottle and the fancier the packaging, usually the worse the bourbon is. Mm -hmm. And I think we have all kind of run into that. Very true. That's not what this is. This is truly a special release. This is a bourbon that Angel's Envy is very proud of and rightfully so. Um, the other thing I love about these annual releases is they are all different. I have drank every one of them and they are all super different. And some years are better than others. This is an amazing addition to the, to the lineup. Well, another benefit of the, the beautiful box is, hey, you have kids, you have pets, maybe a bird passes away, maybe a gerbil dies. That makes a wonderful casket. Sorry, Scruffy. <laughs> See, we were having such a good episode. Now we're talking about burying your parakeet. Hey, listen. Put the there parakeet. is value. There is value everywhere to be had with this bird. Put the parakeet in the in the box, though. <laughs> so, Charlie, I think we've established that this is a drinker. So oh. we we are going to skip the drink it or sink it portion, and we're going to go right to pour it or store it. Are you gonna pour this? Are you gonna, when you, when you get the, the release every year, are you gonna crack it open and, and sip on it or are you gonna store it away for, for it's future? A, it's a great use? question, Glenn, and um, I always buy two. So I have one to drink and, and one unopened. I think that's becoming a theme here. I think maybe we have <laughs> that answer. It's fine. Too. <laughs> no, it, it, this is a special edition, and it, that is, this is one of the few annual releases that I do collect. I, I love this, this release from them, and, and I will always collect them because I think it's cool, and I think it's an underrated, um, even, this sounds crazy to say, even at 250 bucks, I think it's a good value because they're here for a while and then they're gone and then good luck tracking them down. And after yeah. a year or so, trying to find a 2022, go back and try to find a 2018 or 2019. It's tough to do because they do get bought and they get drank. So trying to go back in time. So that's why I, I pour in store, so. There you go. All right, is that, uh, is that all we have on the Angel's Envy? I think so, we're gonna drink some more now. We're gonna drink some more. And while we're drinking, you make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share with your friends. Send it to your grandma. Friend, friend, friend. Do you have, do you have friends? If you're watching this, you probably don't, but you know, <laughs> message us on here and Glenn will be your friend. Cheers. Cheers. And cut. I like it. Wait. Mm. Hot. Mm. You know they say you're supposed to do room temperature. Because you can actually freeze your taste buds. <sighs> Whatever. Whatever. Bullshit. Hello. Welcome to So Into Bourbon. I'm Charlie. This is Glenn. Nope. And why do you always do that? Yeah. Try to mess people up. Oh. We're going to start again. Okay.